Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works, and today we are finishing up a two-part video. So if you haven't seen the first video, make sure you go watch the first video right there, okay? Um, because it'll make a lot more sense, because we're picking up on this video right where we left off on the first one. It was going to be a really long video, and I was talking with our editing team, and they decided to break this up into two parts, so yay to them. So let us know if you like the two-part videos. Uh, we might have some longer ones we break them into two or three or four parts, and that helps me as I'm creating these videos to know when to do a natural pause and when to start them up again, things like that. So we like getting feedback from you on how best we can serve your needs as you're learning these things. So uh, in this video, we're actually, um, let's see, east of Port Angeles, right on the bluffs. Oh my gosh. Um, in the first video, we opened up that first video with a view looking down at the water and it's just stunning. The end of this video um, we do have a view. We end up the whole video with, with overlooking the bluffs too. So stay to the end. You get a beautiful view. And uh, actually this video has two endings to it. Very exciting. So, um, but in this video, we're going to be finishing up. We're going to actually be rebuilding uh, the Swintec slide room and putting it all back together again. And at the end, you'll see the whole thing working. But we did have to overcome quite a few problems um, to make that happen. And um at the end of the first video, one of the things I mentioned was overwhelmingly the challenges we were having with this room was that the manufacturer did not build the room on rollers. Uh, they were just letting it slide right across the carpet. And maybe that's okay, maybe not. But um, in all my education with Lippert, I've been to their factories, I've been to all their schools on this product. Um, they get built on wheels, 24 to 36 inches, and, and they did not do that on this one. So shame on them. Um, uh, so anyway, let's jump into part two of the video. And right away, I think we're going to find out what some of the problems are. So thanks for watching. And here we go. Okay, so we overcame the whole issue of getting the H column off the RV. And when we ordered the new part, uh, the customer called the manufacturer of Thor. Thor gave them the model number to order for the Schwintech parts. I also came out and filled out the sheet and did all the measurements for the tracks, the columns, the motor gauge, everything. And all of that information was sent when we placed our order for the Schwintech system. So could somebody please explain to me why when we have the new part, which matches the part number from the OEM, and I gave dimensions to have this ordered, does this piece stick out an extra foot. Anybody? Anybody? Why, why? How did this happen? How is it that when we call the OEM and the OEM says, yep, your part number is 123ABC, and then I come out here and verify with measurements, did this not get cut correctly? That's question number one. Question number two, I might need to back you up for this next part. Or I can back me up. Okay. So these are the H columns, right? Could somebody please explain to me, when you call the OEM and the OEM gives you the part number for this product, and when I come out here and measure to get the specs on this product, and we send this in to order for this product, first of all, my first question is, how is it that those tracks got so long? Secondly, is this is the H column? How is it, let me wait for it, wait for it. How is it that they're different links? Now, Somebody's not doing their job right. I don't think it's me, because I came out here and measured. I know how to operate a tape measure. Uh, the next part of the problem, down here on the bottom, I don't know if you can see this, but this works okay. This, this is okay, the bottom part of this. The top part is where we're having the issue, because if I separate these two, this is the original that came off of the RV. This is the one that they sent, okay? <sighs> Embraces suck, right? So, what's Darren going to do? Throw in the towel? No. Improvise. Adapt. Overcome. Come on. You know the story. So, what we're going to do is... Oh, but it gets better. Wait. Hold on. It gets better. Let me... Let me... That's... I'm looking for that right down there, right? So, the next challenge... I've kind of taken an inventory of all the blocks that we, we have of the good. So, I'm thinking, can I take the parts from the good and put them on the parts from the bad? And um, so, in Lippert's redesign, the blocks are different. So I don't know if you can see this, but they're narrower, they're a little bit taller. Um, so the, the product's changed. I think what I'm going to try to do to salvage this day, to get the customer going down the road, is 
I'm going to do my very best to take the, the ceramic wheel off of this one and put it on here. It's the ceramic wheels that are breaking. So I'm going to try to take the ceramic wheel and swap it out. I can't really take the block. I can't use this block because it doesn't fit. If I try to take the new block and fit it into the old H column, you'll notice that it's got too much play and that's not acceptable. This is supposed to be a very tight fit. There's too much play. So I cannot take the new block and put it in the old column. Now there's nothing wrong with a column, nothing wrong with the wiper seal. The issue is the ceramic wheel. That's the problem, at least on this side. The other side is a side that's got a lot of problems with it. Um, it was the other side that we haven't gotten to yet. And uh, it was the other side where I think it's broken off. I think, the, I, I don't know, but I think the stem that the ceramic wheel is on, I think that's broken off. So that's gonna be fun when we get down to that side. But I think we'll have enough parts. So the next question is, well, gee, why don't we return all this back to Lippert? Say, hey, let's order this again. The customer doesn't have that much time to wait to see if they can get it right the second time. I would take the same measurements, give them the same sheet. We'd make the same phone call, they would give us the same part number. So somewhere there's a disconnect between what the OEM is telling us a part number is, what the measurements that I filled out the sheet with, what Lippard's receiving, and the guys in the shop are cutting and shipping to us. Maybe this needed to go to somebody else. I don't know, but it's not right, okay? So we're gonna try to do the best we can to um, improvise, adapt, and overcome. So what I'm gonna do to start, I'm gonna continue taking this off, clean it really well, try to understand the fault um, we understand that the manufacturer of this RV did not put rollers underneath the Schwintech. Shame on them. That's wrong. Right out of the Schwintech manual. We learned that in school. The weight of the room is on the rollers, not on the floor. Um, so let me take off this drive shaft here, swap out the ceramic rollers, clean it really good, lubricate it, and see if it gets a nice slide going on with that. Okay. Because you saw how much pressure there was on this bottom down here, even though we fixed this with new parts, even, even if the parts they sent were new, we still run the risk that all the weight is on these ceramic wheels. And that's what's breaking. All the weight is now on the ceramic wheels, and that's not correct. The weight's not supposed to be on the ceramic wheels. These are just guides. These aren't designed to carry the weight of a room, especially a room that's half the length of the RV. So we're gonna do our best putting the ceramic wheels on. And hopefully we can rebuild the broken parts with the new parts. We can't use a block, it's too skinny. We can't use the H column because it's too short and they did the cutouts wrong. We can't use the tracks, the racks, because they're too long. Can I cut it? Yeah, I can cut it. But I really don't want to. And the reason why is because from top to bottom orientation, they line up. So yeah, I could count the teeth, but these racks are okay. The other rack has some scrape marks on it. We already saw that. This rack's okay. This is the side that wasn't terribly wrong. It's the other side that's got, remember we showed you in that video, we showed you the, the ceramic wheel. I was trying to show you the ceramic wheel here is, is gone, it's disintegrated. And these ceramic wheels are also fatigued because as we know, all the weight of the room is on the ceramic wheels. So take this off, swap out the ceramic wheels, clean that really well and see if I can get that to work really, really good. And um, that, that's about the best option we have out here in the field, okay? So let's go. I came up here to take a, uh, to show you guys some stuff, but I mean, I'm just, look at my office guys, room with a view. Beautiful. Okay. Now let me show you what I was going to show you. Okay. Okay. So you take out all the screws on this top track. It's top and bottom. I couldn't get the very last screw. I, it's five sixteenths on this instance, but most of you are going to have screws is what I've found. I just loosened it a little bit. That, that gives me a little bit of a play here. So top and bottom, and let me go down the ladder a little bit more. So now I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm turning here, okay? And now I'm just gonna drive this right off the, uh, there we go. I'm just gonna drive this right off the um, end. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so this is the old ceramic wheel. Then this is the new ceramic wheel. So I'm going to separate that, pull it off, clean it up, degrease it. And let's see what else we can put on here. Um, we've got the new gear. 
I'm gonna make sure this gear will work. So we could use the new gear in there, the new ceramic over there. Uh, the shoes are different. So these are little plastic shoes, so I, I can't use the new shoe on the old one. But this shoe is fine. There's nothing wrong with this little plastic shoe here. So we'll reuse that one. And um, and then at the other end, let's just turn this around and see what we got going on there. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can see this. Let me zoom in on that and I'll show you what we're looking at here. So there's some play in that ceramic wheel, and that's what we don't want. Um, so we'll be replacing this one, and then we'll see if we can get this new gear in there, if it matches up the same. But And then this shoe here, this shoe's good. So this needs some good cleaning. We'll put the new gear on. We'll go with a new motor and new wheel. And then that's what we can do in the field to rebuild this one and put this one back. There's nothing wrong with the drive shaft. There's nothing wrong with the H column. It's a ceramic wheel. We'll try to sit, fit the new gear in there. We can't replace the shoe. We could degrease everything, degrease the track over there, lubricate it, degrease this, lubricate it. Um, the collets, we might be able to put a new collet in there and the new motor. And then rebuild it, okay? Okay, I have cleaned up the bearing block. I've used degreaser and uh, cleaned it up, put on the new ceramic wheel. That's feeling really good. Um, and now I will put on the new gear. I've verified that they're both the same. Um, you'll notice on these that one side's got this little bit of a collar on it and the other side does not. The collar is gonna go down facing the wheel, okay? Another thing I want you to notice on these things is there's an S on them. Okay, right there. So when you align your drive shaft, you want to make sure that your S's are aligned properly. And that way you don't have one that's um, going askew. Okay, so let's keep on moving. Okay, so I've rebuilt my bearing block and I'm going to use the Power Lube High Performance Lubricant with PTFE. That's the product you want to use on these systems. Okay, so everything's lubricated. It's even got a little bit of a nice mint healthy smell. Um, so here's a moment of truth. We're going to slide this in this track. That's nice. Okay, so we have rebuilt one of four blocks. Okay, now that you've seen me rebuild one of four blocks, I'm going to pick up some pick up my pace here. I'm not going to take the time to record me doing the other three blocks. If I run into some problems that are different than what I ran into here, I'll certainly show you that. But I think you understand what I have to do here. So I'm going to rebuild these two blocks and then I'll show you how I align the drive shaft and um, put the motor back on, put the H column back in. Um, so we're going to basically put the screws back in, put our drive shaft back in, and I think we have recovered the best we could under the prevailing circumstances. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the top one. Okay, so when you look at these two gears, let's get them set right. Okay, you're going to see the S's. So, see the two S's right there? So, here's a little trick that I've been doing. I take a Sharpie, and right where that S is, I'm going to mark that tooth. Like that. Okay? And, there, and I'll show you why I'm going to do that. So, he's even with the S. Let me do this. There. So, there's my S. And then I've marked that tooth with a black marker. Okay. I'm just going to put it right there. So here is this S. And I'm going to mark him with a black marker. Okay. And again, I'll mention it again. This side's flat. And this side's got that little bevel to it. The bevel is going to go down. Okay. So let me show you how all this fits together. Okay, so I'm gonna take my tape measure and I'm gonna measure from the end of the rail. I'm not gonna measure from the flange. I'm gonna go to the rail. Rail to rail, top to bottom should be parallel and equidistant. I cannot guarantee that the slide room is made right, but I can guarantee that the rail should be about the same exact size. So I'm gonna to go to the end of the rail here and pick a number. I'm gonna go over two inches, okay? So we're gonna transfer that up to the top one, but remember my Okay, remember, the bevel goes down. Here's the thing. I'm going to put my S with my little black mark right inside there. 
Trying to get him to seat inside of one of those teeth. There he is. Okay, so now I am two inches from the end of the rail, not the flange, into the rail, and my S is oriented towards you, and there's a black mark on that tooth. I'm going to recreate the same thing up on the top, and then I'm going to drive this drive shaft down, and that is how I'm going to get everything aligned. Okay? Okay, so I left you guys down there. What I've got here is the motor, the, the new motor, the new collet, the new gear, the new ceramic wheel, the new ceramic wheel on the bottom. I've degreased everything and lubricated everything. So here we go with a test run. I'm taking my 12 volt battery pack with my cord that we talked about earlier connected to the motor. Okay. And here you see the mechanism moving. Okay. And it's not binding or anything. So that's, that's good success. We like this. Um, And by just changing polarity on my battery pack, I'm able to reverse the motor back and forth. Okay. So now I'm going to bring this pretty close about right there. Okay. I am going to leave this harness thing on my motor. And um, now I'm going to go degrease that H column. See, I said column this time. I'm going to degrease the H column, put that back in place and then fight this thing to get it all put back together and put all of our screws in and then we're done with this side um, we'll put our screw in and then i'll fight the other side um, for time it does take a lot of time to stop and get the camera set up and show you guys so i'll probably do the other side without doing all the recording but if i come across something really strange or bizarre i will record that for you guys okay so um, but i just want to show you how this part's working i think we were able to recover enough parts from the new parts they shipped and uh, build them onto the old parts, at least this side. So we'll find out what we have to do on the other side. So leaving my wire harness up here, motor perched right where it's at, clean up the H column, snap it on. So I'll show you that process and then I'm gonna get busy on the other side and um, maybe do a couple little shots of things, but overwhelmingly I'm gonna be redoing the same thing over there that I did over here, you don't have to watch that. Cool, all right, so let's keep moving. As I was reviewing these raw video feeds, I noticed that this one did not have audio. I guess I stepped on the cable. What I'm trying to point out on this video is the alignment of the cover. And so these things I'm pointing to right here, those are steel gibbs. The newer style columns have um, hardened plastic polyurethane gibbs, but these are the steel ones. And they're gonna be inserted into that aluminum block. So here you have a coefficient of expansion contraction. Those steel gibbs and that aluminum block, if you don't have those lubricated properly, they are gonna make a lot of creaky sounds. That's where it's coming from. Um, if everything is aligned correctly, then that cover is gonna snap on the top and the bottom bearing block properly. Uh, you might need to get it perfectly aligned and hit the top and the bottom at the same time. Another thing I'll point out is because this manufacturer did not put this slide room on rollers, it did make it tremendously difficult, and I think that's where the problems were coming from. Normally, when the slide rooms are on rollers, taking out that H column is a very easy procedure, and putting it back on is a very easy procedure. So we did have to fight with this one quite a bit because we had to raise it up and put it in. Okay, at this point, I'm happy to report we're done on this side. We've got our power puller removed. Um, we've got victory on this point here. Okay, so I've still got my battery pack connected to it. Climbing up the ladder. I'm gonna do this with one hand. Uh, let's see here. Bear with me while I try to get this figured out with one hand here. Um, I don't know which way it's going to go, so let's see which way we're going. Okay, so here we have the rooms going in, and then the room is coming out. Okay, and I've already messed up my wires. So what I want to do is bring the room in a little bit to bring the wire harness inside, and I can make the connections. And remember that piece I had to take out from the inside? I want to get that done. So let's bring this in a little bit. That's probably good enough. I don't want to come in too much because then um, the room's starting to go sideways. But um, we saw this motor and drive shaft drive back and forth a couple of times. So now we've got the H column back in the wall. And so now I'll take my, my wire leads and feed them through the gap up top and we'll connect it to the original um, chassis 
well, I'm sorry, the original OEM wiring that goes to the control module. And so therefore I'm not the control module anymore. And uh, then we'll re-rack and do the whole thing on the back side. And like I said, I'm this taking a lot longer than I would expect. Part of it is because I'm sharing this experience with you guys, but the other part is because the parts that um, we ordered, in my opinion, were not correct. Um, well, obviously they're not correct, but I'm not going to point the finger. I'm just going to adapt and overcome, but it still took a lot longer to do this to have to change everything out. Um, so, but hey, the good news is you might get a pretty sunset at the end. I don't know. The sun is getting low. Here, let's just peek up the top and see where we're at on all that. So there we have our sun and the Strait of Juan de Fuca. So, I'm gonna go work on the backside back there now. Okay, we've made we've made some headway on the other side. Um, taking off the H column wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, all those screws, and um, just kind of using the switch on the inside. We brought the slide room in, uh, maybe about five inches or so, and that was enough for me to get my hand back there to get my little wire harness connected onto the motor here. And then I just wedged myself between the side of the RV and the flashing and just did a little bit of body language and the thing just popped right out. Now, I wanted to show you in here. Um, so a couple things. Right in this groove, there's supposed to be a little plastic shoe. Okay, well that is missing. And down here, we are, that ceramic wheel is just totally disintegrated. So with, without the plastic shoe, this thing is wobbling back and forth. With that plastic shoe, this is not allowed to move. Okay, um, so that explains some of this, the marks here. Another thing I want to point out is this gear um, in here. I'm going to be taking the gear out and we'll take a closer look at it. But the gear has been really working hard. And my position on this is that the reason this is eating itself in the gear and everything is because of a lack of lubrication. And so we'll be going over with the customer on proper lubrication of these systems. And if you look in here a little closer, you can see how that gear is really, let me zoom you in just a touch, how that gear has really been eating into that rack right there. Okay. Um, now, because they sent us racks that are way too long, we're going to stay with this rack. But what we did on the other side is a new motor, new collet, new uh, gear tooth, new ceramic wheel, and then the same on the bottom. All right. So when I get this taken apart, I'll show it to you. Other than that, I'm going to make some, some headway because I'll, otherwise I'll be working out here in the dark. Okay, I've got what appears to be some good news, but then I've got some pretty bad news. Um, and the good news is I found our shoe. The shoe is right here. A little plastic shoe. And um, I don't know if he's broken or not. We'll have to take, just like we did last time, we have to take all these screws off on the top of the bottom to take this rack off to slide this. Well, it, it came out because it was broken. The, this top bearing came out because there was no shoe holding them in and there was no um, ceramic... Uh, oh, gosh, I'm tired. The ceramic wheel on the bottom, so the thing just popped right off. But in order to get the new one on, we have to come off on the end here, so I'll have to take all these screws loose to um, slide them in on the end. But uh, So the good news is we found our shoe, but I think the shoe might be compromised. But let me show you the bad news. There is the bad news. This is the carnage we were talking about. That is supposed to be, if you see that little little notch right there, that's where my spring clip is supposed to mount. And it has been working back and forth with that broken for a while. And it's cut into this, this groove here. So where the top of my finger is down, that has been chewed out. So I would say that this bearing block is not gonna be something that I'm gonna be able to re rebuild. Now, I might have a bearing block like this in my shop. If you've watched my other video, it's going to be the bearing block from the Swintech that I took apart. Um, so I don't, I don't, I'm, what I'm saying is I don't know that I have enough on that little lip right there to actually put that um, C-clip to hold that new bearing in place. This is the old bearing. You can see how it's just, I can't even get them off because that little uh, burr on the thing. But, uh, so this is the old bearing, okay? And, uh... The other bearing, let's take a look at it. Okay, here's the other one. So, see how he's kind of stout, if you will. Um, so, therefore, the shoe is holding it in place. And the bearing wheel, even though... Let's go underneath here. Okay. Even though the bearing 
it's it's loose. That's not supposed to be loose like that. And that's where the play is coming from. So we'll, we can easily replace this ceramic wheel from the bearing block off of the new one. And I think I could rebuild this whole block. The problem is the other one, it's worn out. Um, but like I said, the good news is I remember the one in the video where I took the whole Schwintech apart and showed everybody. I might have a bearing block from that Schwintech that we can use. So that might be, well, there's no might. That's going to be what we're going to have to do because I don't know that I can rebuild that other bearing block because of the, the rubbing off of it. All right. Okay, folks. So because I do not, it, it's almost like, you know, improvise, adapt, and overcome. But this is something right here that uh, I do not feel comfortable trying to rebuild this bearing block, even if with some JB weld or something on there. So like I have mentioned, um, I believe, I'm pretty sure I have one of those bearing blocks from that Schwintech that I took apart that I used in that other video. Um, so we are going to stop here and then um, come back in a couple of days. Uh, we gotta figure out what how the schedule looks, but come back in a couple of days and finish this, this project. All right, so let me give you another pretty view to play with here on our way out. Okay, well, folks, um, probably, this is unscripted. This isn't Hollywood. We don't have a studio to make it right, but um, I do not feel comfortable finishing this with that broken piece. I'm not going to put that piece back in. I was able to rebuild three of the four bearing blocks. And so, like I said, I'm pretty sure I've got another one like that. I didn't throw that other part away. So I've got that. We'll get that. We'll come back over here in a couple of days and, um, and, and finish it. So hopefully you've seen enough of how I did the one side I'm just going to do the same thing to this side. You're going to want to support your room so it doesn't fall out. And, um, you know, make that little wire harness so you can move your motor in and out. It, you become the controller when you're standing on the ladder. You can move it in and out and kind of work that thing in. Um, the power puller does make it handy to kind of jack the thing up and down. Those are some things that you may have seen that I've done that are, that are handy. And um, so... When all this is done, I'm pretty sure that that slide room is going to be as good as it was when it was brand new. Um, we'll go over the customer lubricating everything, so she's going to be golden and happy for another many years on this thing as long as it stays lubricated. So your homework assignment is to lubricate these things. Watch that other video that I made reference to earlier on the Schwintech pieces parts and um, learn where to lubricate your Schwintech. Okay? And so... Um, from Port Angeles, Washington. Happy Camper Say My River Works. This is Darren signing off. Now what Dakota's going to do is do a nice slow pan of our Strait Wanda Fuca. We got some fog rolling in over here. Down here I see the waves crashing up against the shore. And so I will sign off now. Enjoy the view. All right, Dakota, take it away. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Darren, 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 you left us hanging. It's not working. Well, it's been about four days since we left. And uh, obviously the fog has cleared up. So you can see um, Vancouver Island over there, Victoria. So if you ever take a cruise to Alaska, right across the way there is where the cruise ships are gonna stop. And you can go see the gardens and the castle and all the beautiful, it's amazing. We've done that trip several times on the cruise ships to Alaska. Worth the trip. So what I want to show you, it's been four days, we've got it all fixed. So let us go and see the slide room working. Sound good? Let's go see it. Okay, so here we have the slide room totally closed. What we're looking at is a 50% compression on this D-seal. Some people call it a bulb seal or a D-seal. Uh, so we've got a little bit of a compression here and we are uniform all the way to the top. And that would be true on both the front and the rear. So here we are there on the rear side. We've got compression all the way up. And that was a part where I was telling you guys to mark that spur gear S with a paint pen, a Sharpie, something like that. So let's go back over here. I'm gonna call the customer and say, okay, Miss Lori, go ahead and extend. So what you're seeing here the whole slide room is coming out nice and even.
Okay, it stopped both stops at the same time. Okay, Miss Laura, you can retract. So before all the cracking and creaking and jumping and, and slipping and basically breakage, that has been rectified. We have a nicely smooth lubricated slide room working flawlessly now. Okay, so that's what I want your slide rooms to be like. So hopefully, here, let me spin you around. We'll show you this view again. We'll do it over here this time. So hopefully this added value to you. I wanted to add this little PS to the video um, because we kind of left you hanging. And if you went with me this long, let me do there. If you've been with me this long on this video, I figured the least I could do is, is add value to you and uh, show you the finished product. Uh, sometimes you can see Mount Baker over there. Uh, and if you look really carefully, you can see the lighthouse on the Dungeness Spit. If you like Dungeness Crab, that's where they're coming from. And uh, so yeah, straight around to Fuca. If you go to the right, that brings you to the Ad Admiralty Inlet. And if you go all the way to the left over here, that brings you out to the Pacific Ocean. So, and I don't know, it looks like the tide's coming in, but normally that water is crystal clear. So it looks like the tide's coming in. And when the tide comes in, it kind of stirs up some of that. But uh, we've been in the kayaks. We're out, geez, 100 feet, and you can still see the bottom. It's really creepy and scary and fun and exciting at the same time. So come visit us. And uh, so if this helped us, give us a thumb up and uh, happy Camper St. Meyer Works. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. This is Darren, where are we at? Port Angeles area. We're Darren from Port Angeles, Washington, signing off. See you on the next video.